Hi viewers, and today we're looking at Pixie.js and how to create those 3D photos that you see in Facebook. Uh, these are the photos of when you move, move the screen from side to side or you scroll over it, you'll get this 3D effect showing that the picture has depth. Now this is quite easy to do with uh, Pixie.js because it has something called uh, displace, a displacement map. And we use the displacement map to actually create this effect. So the code itself is actually quite small. As you can see, it's it's almost fits on one screen, depending on how big your screen is. And it only consists of a few commands in there. And today I'm going to show you how to actually create this effect, create the displacement maps, and actually get this up and running. So I'm going to first go into what a displacement map is. Now if you come from a 3D imagery or animation background, you'll know what a bump map is. You probably know what a displacement map is as well. So a bump map adds relief to an image. It's a black and white or grayscale image that is added to the image to create a relief on that image so it looks like it has texture or it looks like it stands out from the screen. Now displacement map takes that one step further and it allows you to actually manipulate the geometry on screen which means that you can actually alter the XY position of the displacement map and actually create an effect with that screen that's either animated or some kind of manipulation to that geometry that actually warps, wraps or modifies the position of that image itself on the screen. So here's a sample of a displacement map used in Pixie.js via CodePen that someone's put together and as you can see it's a ripple effect of an image and this is the displacement map that's being used. It's 512 by 512 square map and basically we've just got some cloud or noise that's used to create this ripple effect and we're going to use the same process but using a height map to actually produce the effect that we want now depending on how complex our relief map is we'll create a different result so with this one we see that the foreground and the background are quite disconnected from each other so we've got quite a separate movement between the two with a bit of parallax scroll at the bottom or parallax movement where the grass seems to actually move quicker in the background than what it does in the foreground. If we look at the actual depth map itself you can see what's going on. Our foreground figure is one single colour whereas the grass you will see a gradient change until we get to the background which is again just two separate colors so we have these these two images quite disconnected with each other and creates this nice effect whereas we look at this meerkat the meerkat itself looks like it's in three dimensions it looks like it's a 3d model and this is because the map itself has much more definition as you can see the eyes and the nose are defined and that's where we're getting this 3D effect from. Right, so we're going to get into some code. The first thing I'm going to do is create a folder for this project. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to open folder and I'm going to place it I'm place in the root of C at the moment. I'm going to just place a new folder in here and call this Pixie.js 3D photo. I'm going to use that folder and what we're going to do is add a new file this is going to be our index.htm and I'm going to add two files to this and these are going to be the image files and the actual def map itself there we go so I'm going to pull in the coral one like I used and the actual def map itself so you can see the actual coral depth map here and the normal coral they're both PNGs so those are sitting in there and now we can actually get into the code itself so once we've created the index.html we need some code to place in there so first of all we're going to create the basic structure of the HTML page and here it is so we've got the HTML body and script in there we're pulling a library from Cloudflare for the Pixie.js library 
Now if we're using no, this is also going to be a lot different. We have to use npm install throughout. But we'll come to that at another date. At the moment I'm just going to take you through the JS so we can actually get this up and running and later convert it to Node. Our next step is to actually create a constant for the window width and the window height that we're going to be using because we're going to be using that throughout the actual program itself to define the app and the actual image size that are going to be coming in. So I've used a const of wind width and wind height and this will be used throughout. Next we have to actually instantiate the Pixie.js app and actually add it to the document and we'll be passing in this wind width and wind height as well. So here you see I've created a Pix app constant and this is assigned to new Pixie application and we'll pass in the wind width and wind height in there. We also append it to the document body by appending the Pix app view so we can actually see the canvas on screen. We next need to actually pull in the images that are going to be used. So the first one we're going to pull in is the actual normal image, the one that's going to be displayed, not the displacement map. Now Pixie just uses uh, sprites and what we're going to do is actually create a sprite on screen. So here I've created a constant called image and this is assigned to a new pixie.sprite and we'll pull that in from the normal coral PNG which is this one. So this is our normal image and we also set the image width and the image height to that of the actual window, windows inner width and windows in a height as well. So we keep the width and height constant throughout. Of course if this image isn't the size of the window there's going to be some stretching issues and some pixelation there. But for the time being we keep this up as is. The next thing we have to do is actually pull in a depth map and this is exactly the same as the actual sprite itself which is actually creating an image for the actual depth map and then we're going to assign it later to the actual displacement filters. Here I've created a constant called depth map and again created a sprite and given it an actual image itself. And this is the actual depth map. Again we're setting the width and height to the wind height and wind width of the actual window itself. Next we have to tell Pixie that our depth map is going to be used as a displacement map. And what we've done is create a displacement map filter and assigned it to a new Pixie Filters displacement map and passed in the depth map. Now we need to stage our components which includes the filter and the images. We use the dot stage dot add child command to add the images which is the depth map and the image and then we stage the filter to our stage filters once this is done, our images should display on screen. I use the Python simple HTTP server to actually host this. And there you go, that's our image actually on the screen. But we have yet to actually move this image about and create the 3D effect that we're looking for. We need to listen to events on the mouse and actually allow this to happen. So that's what we're going to do next. To listen to our mouse move event, we just add the windows on mouse move, and in here we can actually define the actual movement of the window itself. To create this 3D effect and illusion, all we need to do is move the displacement filter and scale the x and y position. Now to scale this properly we need to move the image to the right as we move to the left and the image to the left as we move to the right when we go past this centre point. Now this is quite easily done. So if we divide the window width by 2 and minus the x position of the actual pointer itself that will give us the effect that we need. And we have to do the same with the y. Now to explain this more, if we think about our window width of 100, so our pointer x position can fall 
anywhere between 0 and 100. Now if we're using window width divided by 2, that's 50. So if our x position was at 100, and now if it was the far right of the screen, then we're minusing 100 from 50. So our x scale will be minus 50. And that creates our effect of movement of left and right when we actually move between minus 50 and plus 50 along the x-axis. That's how this works. And the trouble is, is this is going to be too sensitive. So if I actually run with these figures themselves, we will see that this is moving too fast and we get some problems with the speed and the actual distance that the X and Y have actually moved. So we need to tone this down a bit and we can divide it by 10 bring this into the actual uh, range we want. Now that is no mathematical algorithm to actually find out that range. It all depends on the image and the actual displacement map quality that you're actually using. So let's go and divide this by 10 and see what we get. Now we've divided by 10, you can see the actual displacement map and the actual illusion is working much cleanly.